This is the city, Los Angeles, California. It's a large place with a small history. Its origin lies in the missions which can be found in the area. Mission San Gabriel was the first one in Los Angeles. It sheltered 1,300 Indians and spread out over many acres with its shops, granaries, and chapels. Adventurous pioneers started immigrating from Mexico, 1,000 miles and seven months of hard travel. By 1795, there were five ranchos in the area, and a new mission was built in San Fernando. These missions became the center of activity, protecting the settlers and providing a place to gather. In peace, they were places of worship. During war, they became forts. From these missions sprang the towns, then the cities. The way of life is different today. People can't use the protection of mission walls. When they need help, they call me. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. September 18th, it was cool in Los Angeles. We were working in press relations out of Public Affairs Division. The boss is Captain Shannon. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Los Angeles has many visitors, with the exception of those who violate the law. Only a handful, maybe one in a million, poses any problem for the Los Angeles Police Department. The press has a name for them, VIPs. Among them is the person frequently called the most important man in the world. All right, we've got to help arrange a press conference, L.A. International, 10.40 a.m. tomorrow, for the President of the United States. And don't bother telling me we haven't much time. I was just about to bring that up. How long will the President be in town? 24 hours. Makes a speech at his hotel tomorrow night, then he's on his way the next morning. The press know about it yet? No, but they will. In about 30 minutes, the visit will be announced by the Presidential Press Secretary in Washington. 11 o'clock, our time. Mighty short notice. Could be the best thing. Smaller crowds, better all around. Yes, sir. Who's the advance man for the Secret Service? Agent Roger Frank. Inspector Mills is representing the Chief. Conference room 618. Yes, sir. When's the briefing? Right now. <laughs> Ten forty-five a.m., we went to the conference room with Inspector Mills. At the request of the Secret Service, the department would supply needed manpower and equipment to help ensure the president's safety. For the next two days, Agent Frank's job would be the toughest police assignment on earth. He had 24 hours to nail down and nail tight security and logistics for the presidential visit. After that, the job would get tougher. When Air Force One touched down at Los Angeles International, primary responsibility for the president's safety would rest squarely on his shoulders. Gentlemen, I believe most of you already know Agent Roger Frank, U.S. Secret Service, Inspector McAllister, Patrol, Inspector Howe, Tactical Operations and Planning, Inspector Hagen, Department Press Relations, Captain Colwell, Intelligence, Sergeant Friday, Press Relations, Officer Gannon, Press Relations, and Sergeant Sherman, Traffic Special Events and Planning Unit. Thanks, Inspector. I think you fellas all know Jim Shepard, our local agent in charge. Okay, Roger, it's your baby. Tell us what you want. Well, gentlemen, first of all, there's no use apologizing for the short notice. For obvious reasons, it's the way things are done these days, so we live with it. Now, for the benefit of Sergeant Friday, in about 10 minutes, the White House will be releasing news of the president's visit. Yes, sir, in time for plenty of coverage. You know your press, TV, and radio. What kind of crowds can we expect? Heavy or light? Heavy. Airport and hotel both. You can bet on it. And we'll work on that premise. Is the president's schedule pretty firm? It's all set. He arrives in Air Force One at 10.30 a.m., an airport press conference at 10.40, then a chopper to the hotel, weather permitting. You'll see a few friends, speak at the hotel tomorrow night, then head back to D.C. the next morning. Not as simple as it sounds. It sounded simple a few years ago. Then we went to Dallas. The press conference, that's your baby, right, Sergeant? Yes, sir. 
Okay, I'll want a list of suggestions. We'll clear whatever you recommend. How long will a press conference last? Half hour at the most. They don't like it, blame it on me. In the past, intelligence has worked with your people on a one-to-one -one basis. Same deal this time? Well, you guys know the territory and the faces. One of our people, one of yours. They make good teams. Now, about the faces. We got a few pictures for you. How about yours? Got your pictures, Captain? Yes, sir. Here's the disgruntles we'll want to keep an eye out for. Have any of them threatened the president's life? No, sir, or they'd be in jail. We just figure they'll bear watching. All right. I want 50 prints of each picture, plus a rap sheet and anything else you know about them. No problem. Anybody foresee any demonstrations? How about it, Joe? Your local press handle anything lately? Negative. Been pretty quiet the last few days. Oh, you may see a few pickets, but anything you get can't amount to much. What makes you so sure? Well, it's too late now for a parade permit. We'll be on the streets tonight taking a few temperatures. Anything is cooking, we'll know it by morning. Good. All right, gentlemen, number one. The exact arrival time remains confidential. Air Force One lands and parks on the FAA ramp. The president deplanes, he shakes a few hands, gets into the bubble top. Where do we go from there? Well, Joe, where do you recommend we hold the press conference? Well, there's a good-sized lounge in the FAA hangar. Security's good, it's close to the airplane, and there's plenty of power for the TV people. I was thinking of a VIP suite in one of the satellites. Oh, I like Joe's idea better. Save a trip across the field, not near the crowd problem. Besides, like Joe says, the hangar's a good security shield in itself. Only one big window, and we can limit entrance to a single door. I'm sold. Put it in writing, will you, Sergeant? Right. Okay. Press conference is over. We're leaving the hangar, heading for the chopper. We find out the weather won't allow us to make the trip by air. What happens? Three surface routes be enough? Way ahead of me, huh? Three will be fine. We've got a chopper upstairs now checking them out. They'll be free of construction and heavy traffic. Each will clock about the same, 40 to 45 minutes from airport to hotel. Good. I want to dry run them this afternoon. How about it, Jim? Freeway still out? Sorry, Rog. Too many overpasses. I agree. They're like rooftops. They invite trouble. If the president has to drive instead of fly, will there be any stops? No stops. I'll guarantee it. And three cars should handle agents and intelligence. Then I'll figure it this way. Black and white car in the lead, then two security cars. The bubble top next. Another security car behind it. Two more cars for the Washington press people and a black and white car bringing up the rear. Twelve motors for escort. Sounds fine. Well, if no one objects, Bill and I would like to be in the lead black and white. No objection here. I'd say that's where you belong. No problem, Joe. Now, that brings us to the hotel. The president steps from the bubble top. I want him inside as quick as possible. Inspector McAllister? I've seen the president in action before. He likes to mingle with the people. Right. We can hope for a fast entrance, but we probably won't get it. Well, that means a maximum uniform detail. I figure 20, 25 men to get him into the lobby and to the elevator. An equal number outside whatever entrance he uses. I figure the main entrance. Our man doesn't like freight elevators. But give me an alternate, just in case. We'll give you two. Same manpower on both as the front door. The other three entrances will be sealed off. You guys are making me feel downright useless. What about press and TV at the hotel? You see much activity? No, sir, not really. They'll get most of what they want at the airport. Now, of course, the wire services, networks, and the metropolitan papers will keep a man at the hotel as long as the president's here in town. All LAPD press passes will be checked. Very good. You got a fix on your command post inside the hotel yet, Inspector? Right. We're on the floor beneath the president's suite, next to an elevator, right off the stairwell. We can move quickly in any direction. Phone lines are going in now. Okay. We've arranged to set up right above the president. How do we look there, Jim? We're already in business. Let's go over the layout. Gentlemen, the ninth floor of the hotel. The presidential suite is down this main corridor, to the left of the elevators. These are additional corridors. Some lead to stairwells, fire escapes, windows, openings on balconies. As you can see, we have some problems. Three public stairwells, one house stairwell, three fire escapes, six elevators. Sounds like you've done your homework. We try. It takes ten teams to seal off the ninth floor, not counting elevators. Don't forget the freight elevator. Now let's keep a team on that for the duration, Captain. Right. But we can't put teams on every elevator. Makes the guests feel like they're riding up and down in a jail cell. So we'll do it this way. Five of the elevators will haul guests, as usual. They just won't be permitted to stop at the ninth floor. The sixth elevator won't stop anywhere else. We'll have a team on the ninth floor and one in the lobby to look the passengers over, okay? Will there be any uniformed men on the ninth floor? Won't be necessary. Floor will be sealed. What about other guests on the ninth floor? The hotel security's taking care of that. Floor will be cleared by 10 a.m. tomorrow. We hope. We got a couple of balkers. Claim they're paid up for the week. Now, the presidential suite itself. Can we arrange for your scientific investigation team? Not enough time to get our technical security men out here. Already arranged. SID will be there the minute the floor is sealed. I want that suite given a thorough shakedown. For a few hours, those rooms will be the White House. What can I release over and above what comes out of Washington? Very little, I'm afraid. It'd be nice if I had something to help assignment editors plan their coverage. Tell you what I'll do. I'll make up a list of unclassified guidelines. Call them advisory suggestions, where your photographers and cameramen might set up to get some pictures. About all I can do, I'm afraid. It'd help. You got a deal. Now, anybody, 
from the hotel manager on down, who might be working in the vicinity of the president, is going to need a security clearance. We'll watch your OK, and we'll run them through our computer, too. Coded pins, gentlemen. Colored pins, the identification system we've worked out for this visit. System is varied, of course, for each occasion. Tomorrow it's pins, next day it's something else. The kitchen and banquet room personnel will get the white pins with the blue dots. Maids, bellhops, room service personnel, anybody who does business on the ninth floor will get this yellow pin with the red dot. It'll be worn on the lapel or the collar. Everybody see him? How about admission to the banquet room? Except for newsmen whose credentials you'll certify, it'll be by ticket only. A secret service man will pick him up. Any more questions? You want a fluoroscope for the kitchen? Not this time. We'll settle for an agent at the service table. Frank speaking. OK, go ahead. Well, we knew it'd happen. You bet, thanks. Weather Bureau. Thought it never rained out here. Only when you don't want it to. <laughs> but it's going to rain tomorrow. Chopper's out. We go by car. Our SID people are out at the hotel standing by with a Geiger counter. Want to run out and check the suite? Sounds good. I'll give you a lift to save a trip back to the federal building. Right, thanks. Anything else we can do for you? Thanks, Inspector. Looks like your people have done a fine job considering this last minute rush rush. No problem. One last thing. I usually recite this to remind myself. Back home, I work the White House detail. Before all agents sign in, there's a little deal that hangs in a frame above the sign-in desk. It's required reading by all of us. It's part of an article that appeared in a Washington newspaper some time back. Short and to the point. It goes something like this. Last night, a man approached the presidential box and confronted the guard outside. The visitor was well-dressed, and his demeanor appeared normal. He said he had a message for the president. For one brief moment, that guard relaxed his vigil and permitted the man to enter the box without proper clearance. Thirty seconds later, Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States, lay dying of a pistol ball shot in the head. p.m. We arrived at the presidential suite. Ray Murray, along with an investigator from the electronics section and a team from the firearms and explosives unit of SID, began a check of the rooms. You've been here before, huh? Yeah, a couple of years ago when the Soviet premier was in town. You got to give the premier one thing, don't you? What's that? He doesn't dislike everything about capitalism. How'd it go, Chef? Not so good. Guy claims we want him out, we'll have to carry him out. Well, maybe I'll strike out too, but I better talk to him. I see you brought some reinforcements. Agent Frank, United States Secret Service. Sergeant Friday, LAPD. I'm impressed. You mind if we come in? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. I understand from Agent Shepard here you object to moving out. I told him and I'll tell you. Nobody, FBI, Secret Service, you name it, is going to toss me out of the room I paid a week's rent on in advance. Not even for the President of the United States. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly, sir. Tonight when I step out for supper, you lock it up, I suppose. No, sir. Really? <laughs> Who's kidding who? I'm afraid you won't be stepping outside. Oh, now I get it. OK, who's going to stop me? A guard, sir. 24 hours a day, right here. I see. No room service, either. No room service, sir. No room service. No, sir. OK, I'll be moving to another room. The manager's holding one for you. But I want it understood. I wouldn't do this for anybody except the president of the United States. Yes, sir. Joe, getting a pretty good kick on something in here. Thank you, Mr. Raven. No problem at all. Glad to cooperate. Over here. This thing's hotter than a pistol. Room's clean except for this. Something radioactive in there. Take a look. It's jumping pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. We'll run down to the lab right away. p.m. Ray Murray had run his examination of the wall plaque and came up to the office to give us the results of his findings. Ran a spectrographic test on the paint. It's an old piece, been painted 12 times, including the top coat, which is gold leaf. Something in the paint? No, paint and the gold leaf check out clean. It's in the clay. The clay? Yeah. It's a one-piece cast, just something inherent in the particular slip the manufacturer used. Slip? Yeah, that's what they call a liquid clay that's poured into the mold. 
Some kind of slight radioactive characteristics. It's not dangerous, then. Not enough Rankins to be dangerous, even with continuous exposure. Hotel must have redecorated that suite. That plaque sure wasn't there two years ago when we checked it. Well, I'll get it back to the hotel. And the rest of the suite checked clean. As a whistle. Thanks, Murray. Just wanted to be sure. In a presidential suite, the only way to fly. Six p.m. All divisions reported. The plan was shaping up. Agent Frank briefed us on the route of the presidential party. Now the red route is the motorcade primary. It's not the shortest, but I like it. Not too many high rises, fewer major intersections to block off, and not so many people. We can roll it a pretty good clip. Friday? Yes, sir. Here's where you can spot your cameraman to catch your arrivals and departures. Sorry, but nobody along the route. Yes, sir. I've listed the locations on your suggestion sheet. There's only one stipulation. No photographers at any of those vantage points without one-on-one -on -one teams in attendance. Understood? Right. Okay, let's shove off. Now, Friday and I will be at the hangar for the next hour or two, gentlemen. After that, I'll be at the hotel. See you at five in the morning. Six thirty p.m. Agent Frank and I left Parker Center for L.A. International Airport. Bill stayed behind to handle incoming press calls. Sixteen and a half hours to go. Tomorrow, when Air Force One approaches the field, what happens to the other aircraft? Well, the control tower will divert them to holding areas. When Air Force One lands and turns off the runway, the airport's back in business. When it's ready to leave, they'll clear the area again. I see. You like the setup? Short taxi from the runway, big ramp, close to the hangar. Very good. When are you going to start setting up in here? Peg Herford from the airport PR office is sending over a load of chairs. The telephone people are on their way. How about the TV people? They'll be here at 3 a.m. Very good. Hot. I had them filled up about 15 minutes ago. On the ball, huh? You sure you don't want a job? No, thanks. I lose enough sleep on the one I got. You take it black? That'll be fine. If they ever quit making coffee, I'll have to go back to sleeping. <laughs> now, you were in Army Intelligence, Korea with MacArthur, and then the FBI. What made you go for the Secret Service? Where'd you pick up all that? Your sidekick, Shepard. We work a lot of jobs together. You're so efficient, I'm going to take a 10-minute break. No, I'm curious. Why the Secret Service? Beats me, Joe. I got a wife who calls me the missing person. Kids who couldn't describe me if they had to. Bank account flatter than a stove lid. I'm working on an ulcer. So how do you figure it? Right now? Right now. You're a tired cop. Tired and dumb. And perfectly happy. Air Force One was two hours from touchdown. Agent Frank added a final impressive touch. Pretty, isn't it? Real pretty. Hey, buddy, you're in business. I gotta go check the tower. Okay, let them in. All right, you news hounds, come on in. Grab seats as quick as you can. Just find seats as quickly as you can, if you will, please. Find seats right away, would you, ladies and gentlemen? We'd appreciate it. Your attention, please. Could I have your attention, please? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Mr. President. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been reading the wire services, you probably know as much as we do. But if you have any questions, let's have them. Hey, Joe, look at me. I'm standing up, just like for the man. Congratulations, Chuck. Now, what's your problem? Any more details about what the president will be doing? No, I'm afraid not. He makes a speech tonight at the Merchants Association banquet, and then he flies back to D.C. in the morning. That's the program. What route will the motorcade take into town? Sorry, Harry. Confidential. Okay, can you tell us this? Will there be any stops? No stops. That's a promise. Joe, the wire service is goof. They didn't say a word about who was traveling with the president. You know, there's got to be a member of the family at least. How about some names? We don't know any. You mean you're not telling? Are you questioning the veracity of a Los Angeles police officer? That's exactly what I'm doing, Gannon. <laughs> we still don't know. Who's invited up to the president's suite? That's not my department, Harry. Well, let me put it this way. We got a guy at the hotel. If he wanted to collect pictures of famous faces, where would you suggest he start? Well, I'd start in the lobby, close to one of only six elevators. But we're only interested in one. 
Which floor will it be stopping at? The one that's sealed. Otherwise, you'll have the full run of the hotel. Thanks a lot. You guys will find out what floor it is within five minutes after the president checks in. You know that, and so do we. Where will you be at the hotel, Joe? Bill and I will be in that small room just to the left of the banquet room entrance. You all know where that is. One of us will be there around the clock till the president leaves. By the way, the Merchants Association has set up a press room next door to us. They've got a lot of background stuff on the president's visit. What about pictures at the hotel? Shoot all the film you want. There's no limitation except for the president's floor. Oh, how about pictures here, outside, I mean? Photos will be allowed on the ramp, but like I told you on the phone, TV will have to use hand cameras outside. Once the president's inside this hangar, the door stays shut. You won't have time to move a lot of equipment around. Any big shots meeting the plane? Well, Washington's asked them not to, Chuck. If they're coming, we don't know about them. That 30-minute time limit for the press conference still apply? Absolutely. Any restrictions about what we're allowed to ask? Well, nothing's been said to me. You heard of any restrictions, Bill? Just don't ask him about the Washington Senator's ball club. <laughs> as far as we know, you're on your own. Now, of course, the presidential press secretary might have other ideas. Where will the party enter the hotel? What door? The main entrance. I told you where to set up. I even got a couple of guys to guard your crew for you. Sure, and now you'll slip him on the back way. Well, now, Harry, anything's possible, but I doubt it. I've got a newscast at 11 p.m. What time do you figure the speech tonight? Well, offhand, I'd say you have no problem, Chuck. Should be 8, 8, 15. But just in case, how about doubling up on your camera crews? Let the first guy shoot some footage and then hightail it back to the studio with it. The second camera can protect you on whatever develops. Live mics will be accommodated on the podium. Joe, we all know the security for the president's getting tougher and tougher. For my afternoon story, how many L.A. policemen are involved in this deal? I'll be honest with you. I don't know the exact figure. But it's a lot of cops, right? Well, the department is cooperating with the Secret Service in every way possible. Now, we realize our responsibility, and it's a big one. You can say this. There'll be sufficient manpower, both here and at the hotel, to cope with any eventuality. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> I heard the tail end of that. You sure you don't want a job? You take one, you take both of us. I withdraw the offer. Big deal. You come and see me when I'm chief of police. We'll be looking for recruits. You got him for a partner, have you? Every day. Hey, Bill. I've got a technician at the gate. Can you clear him in? Tell me, Chuck, how do you ever make a deadline? Any danger this rain will delay the landing? No. Just check the tower. Plenty of ceiling and good visibility. I don't know. It's me, I guess. I just hate to have a president rained on. Never rains in Washington. Well, plenty. But out of town, I consider it a reflection on my planning. <laughs> Good rain like this here in California is worth a million bucks this time of the year. So I've heard. You all set in here? All set. Good. You sure you don't want that job? See ya. Ten fifteen a.m., flying above the weather, Air Force One was approaching L.A. International, precisely on schedule. I haven't seen this field so quiet in years. Yeah. Where are they? Turning on the final now. Ladies and gentlemen, Air Force One will be on the ground in about two minutes. Now, if you plan to be outside on that ramp, you better get moving. Let's go. Look at that, Joe. right on the nose. Now that's the way to run an airline. Yeah, well, let's go get wet. Good idea. You know how the president is. Why no? How is he? Are you kidding? He'd never forgive us if we kept him waiting. film in no way purports to have depicted the entire security procedure conducted by the Secret Service in its immense task of protecting the President of the United States. But if in some small measure it is given an indication of the tireless and ceaseless round-the-clock efforts of this superior group of men, the film has served its purpose. With a sense of pride, then, we dedicate this small tribute to the agents of the United States Secret Service.